The City 17 Citadel is one of the largest buildings ever built on Earth. Based on the Skybox model and Hammer's measurement conversion, the Citadel's architectural height is 3.4 kilometers tall. This puts it far above some of the tallest structures in the world. On top of this impressive height, parts of the exterior actually move and articulate. One bit of movement is at the base of the building. Here, a set of machines act like a thumper, as both prior to the Citadel's completion and after the teleport's destruction, antlions could be found within City 17's urban limits. This central component of the building also articulates. One of its other architectural features is the cables that extend from the building into the city proper. The City 17 Citadel features two forms of power generation for two different sets of purposes. The first is the Dark Fusion Reactor located at the top of the building, which is directly connected to the Quantum Tunneling Entanglement device there, as well as other such devices at other citadels on the planet. This also includes related communication systems to other universes, and is apparently connected to the suppression field that has kept human populations quite small. A second core of energy is located further down the building, and is specifically designed with white metals, a unique feature in Combine architecture in general. While in-game, the terms reactor and core are sort of interchangeable for these two. This video will use reactor for the one seen in Half-Life 2, and core for the one seen in Episode 1. This citadel is also where Dr. Breen's office is located, and also acts as a garrison and depot for various elements of the Combine's armed forces. Logistically, it has razor train connections, gunship repair areas, and Combine soldier beds where possible memory manipulation occurs. Striders, crab synths, and mortar synths also move about the facility for various purposes. It is staffed and run partly by stalkers, with regular soldiers, elite soldiers, and later shotgunners acting as guards. The Shulothui advisors still in incubation pods also rested in the citadel. Roller mines are also either produced in or otherwise deployed from the citadel. The citadel is also connected to the Overwatch voice, which makes citadel specific announcements. Attention. Transport Singularity Interlock Sequence Engaged. However, it seems that the voice's health was connected to the health of the Citadel. As it took damage, so did the voice begin to experience issues. Warning. Call reprogramming When it was destroyed, the voice had changed. All autonomous units. All autonomous units. Except mandatory sector assimilation. Some of the computers in the building can also display brain casts as well. The Citadel also maintains a technology called a confiscation field, which can disintegrate unwanted items, save for the gravity gun. The Citadel features an even larger prisoner pod storage and movement system than what is seen in Nova Prospect. The Citadel took over eight months of construction to fully build. Here is a timeline of events as recorded by Alex Vance in her hideout. April. A massive storm appears over City 17, depositing a nearly one kilometer tall central spine. Its base sat some distance below the surface of the Earth. The storm seemed continuous after this. Some observable surface details on the spine were spotted. June. By this point, more of the structure was built out and brand new scaffolding was attached to the spine this month. The raging storm from April had disappeared and the name Citadel was known by this point. Some amount of perimeter defense was built around the hole at the base of the structure. Feeder cables had been hooked up by this point. November 29th. The scaffolds have become mobile. A power source in the middle of the building had been turned on, likely explaining rolling blackouts in the city around this time. The area where this power source was built was originally thought to be a flight deck by Alex back in June. More and more cables had been added daily, and the perimeter around the base has become more defended. At the time of Half-Life Alex, the Citadel's nearly full height was reached through basic skeleton work. It was mostly receiving paneling via Hunter Chopper, cables were being hooked up to machines on the rooftops of buildings via striders, and the cables that were already in place were delivering a green energy to the building. The core could not be seen during the day either. The Citadel was finished at some point in the intervening five years between Alex and Gordon Freeman's return in Half-Life 2. When Gordon did return, he accidentally teleported right into Dr. Breen's office, prompting the Combine to go on full alert. 
In the later stages of the Siege of City 17, Gordon, Alex, and Eli Vance would all end up in the Citadel in Dr. Breen's office. Gordon would race up the whole building to reach the latter two, battling Combine Forces stationed there, Alex having been taken during the street fighting, and Eli being teleported there from Nova Prospect. After being freed by Dr. Judith Mossman, Alex and Gordon would attempt to chase down Dr. Breen. Dr. Breen was attempting to use the Combine Interdimensional Teleport to escape, but was stopped by Gordon and Alex, destroying the teleport and destabilizing the building's cores. The second core expanded outward like a dying star because of this, and based on Dr. Kleiner's comments, would collapse soon after. This expansion washed the core chamber in lethal doses of radiation. Another side effect of the reactor's destruction was the formation of a red storm at the top of the building. Gordon and Alex, still in City 17, had to return into the Citadel to try and stabilize this core in order to begin fleeing. The building was a mess, with catwalks breaking apart, wreckage everywhere. The upper part of the building seemingly falling apart, raining debris down on the lower sections. By this point, Combine forces were trying desperately to send a message to their upper echelons in another universe. However, in order to do so would ultimately mean the destruction of the Citadel, a sacrifice they were willing to make. Gordon and Alex would ultimately be able to reactivate the containment field required for the core. Although it was stabilized, this was only a temporary affair, and the Citadel would finally explode in a dark energy flare. Bathing City 17 and the immediate countryside in a blue-white glow and lifting smaller objects like cars right off the ground. The flare would rip the building apart, scattering debris across the urban area, and whose physical shockwave destroyed the train Alex and Gordon were on. Chunks were so large they were visible from a considerable distance. This flare also led to the birth of a super portal and new portal storms, which would become the primary focus of resistance efforts going forward. The Citadel is a playable location in Half-Life 2 in Episode 1. The strewn about ruins of it can be seen a few times in Episode 2. It can be seen under construction in Half-Life Alex at the beginning of the game. The Citadel is represented by several different entities when you aren't playing inside it. It should be noted that there is a discrepancy with the height of the Citadel in the Citadel chapters, and the model. This is likely on purpose, as to have the level be really set that high up, it would mean that the cityscape would likely not be visible. An unused series of models were left in the files of Episode 1, which are all part of a cut explosion animation for the Citadel. Unused note models that were supposed to be in Alex's hideout in Half-Life Alex show less detail and shorten the time frame of construction. In this version, the Citadel was constructed over weeks. In the first week, a central spine was placed down. Week 4 saw the addition of numerous cables, some of which connected to the large combine machines that might have a connection to the suppression field, or possibly the suppressor artillery from Half-Life 2. These connected structures being built on the rooftops of nearby buildings. By week 9, the upper portion of the citadel appeared above the spine within that week. Likely in this scenario, the in-between section would have been filled out over time. Test dialogue for the Vortigaunts and Half-Life Alex say that once the citadel was completed, the vault would be moved off-world. When the citadel is completed, the weapon will be sent, and the fate of this organic sphere retreats into emptiness. Here's what the original Half-Life 2 Citadel model looks like in Source 2. In comparison to several other video game structures, the Citadel is taller than the Shard and Mirror's Edge Catalyst and Oni Headquarters in Halo Reach.